cooled off, cooled off just in time for camp for us here. So they kind of caught a break on that next couple of days. But, um, good to get, you know, always good to get going this time of year. You know, it's been a lot of hard work and preparation put into the 2019 season, uh, going all the way back to you know, like February 4th. So uh, various aspects of team building, training, uh, off-season program, OTAs, mini camp, so forth and so on. So. Um, and now is a chance where we can really start to um, see it all come together. And, um, you know, we have a lot of different types of players on our team, some guys that have been here before, some that are new, some that have been with other teams in the league um, and are in very, uh, various stages of experience and uh, excited to work with all of them and excited to see how it all comes together. Uh, so we'll just take it one step at a time, one day at a time. Obviously, got a long, long, long way to go. Uh, but looking to make progress every day and you know, just kind of continue to move the ball forward. Um, uh, just a quick comment on the um, NFL uh, Top 100 project. I guess there's some um, things that have been released as a part of that promotion or, or whatever exactly it is. I'm not sure, but i just say it was a great honor for me to be part of the selection process and to be part of the uh, show. Um, there are obviously thousands of um, great NFL uh, players and coaches, uh, legends involved in the game, many of whom I've watched or observed or studied um, you know, throughout my entire life. And so it was a tremendous process, very difficult um, in terms of the selection, but it was, again, a great honor to be a part of it and um, to go down and um, be in NFL films and, and see that operation was um, extremely impressive. It's a great, uh, they do a great job preserving the history of the game. Um, it's extremely well run, professional. Um, they have great resources and I think have done a tremendous job in their presentation of the game. Um, Kenny Rogers, the Sable family, um, the entire NFL films group. So, um, you know, just being on the set with um, Chris and, and Rich was. Um, a great honor, a great thrill, um, and many of the other legends that were, were there with us. Uh, so that was um, something I've never been a part of, and um, it's very insightful and certainly uh, gave me a, a, a greater appreciation for this great game and what the National Football League has accomplished um, and the individuals who have, have written the stories over the last uh, 100 years. So. Um, it's a great experience for me. So, um, but moving back to the present here, we're you know get underway today, and um, we'll just like I said, take it one day at a time, see how it goes. Just um, business at hand, like every player report that you were expecting to report. Uh, yeah, we'll have something at the end of the day if there are any things. If we have any announcements, we'll make them at the end of the day. It's so pretty early. It's like 10 a.m., right? Yeah, it's early. Do you enjoy training camp or do you find it grind? Training camp is a very necessary part of getting the football team ready. So I enjoy all parts of football season, from beginning to end, off season, in season. I enjoy all of it. Do you expect to have a new contract and extend or an extension for Tom Brady before the regular season? I'm not going to talk about player contracts or any other contracts for that matter. Obviously, Bill, you're looking forward to the season here, but uh, it is uh, your 20th season now as the head coach of the Patriots. Do you ever allow yourself uh, a moment to reflect on just how long you've been here and what's happened over 20 years? Yeah, I haven't spent a lot of time on that, Ben. What does it mean to be in a place for 20 years? I enjoy it here. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, I enjoy coaching our team. I hope I can do a good job. I want to try to give them the best that I can and put, our, put ourselves, put our team, put our individual players and coaching staff in the best position that we can to compete. Uh, I hope I can do that this year. 
Phil Isaiah win avoided the pub list. Do you expect him to be at full go at the beginning of training camp? Yeah, we'll see where everybody is. That's part of the start of training camp is to you know, evaluate everybody's physical condition, uh, especially the players that didn't participate uh, last year or that are new to the team and that are dealing with some type of condition, let's call it. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it all goes. After not having any joint practices last year, there's two stretches this year with Detroit and, and Nashville. What type of benefit do you think that will be to the team to be able to get those practices in? I think it'll help our team improve. But we'll see. Will there be a challenge associated with, with being away from your facility for essentially a couple weeks there? I mean, there are always a lot of logistics in moving a football team somewhere. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of equipment. It's a lot of <clears throat> it's a lot to do. But we have people in our organization that do a great job of that. And we have to do it on all the away games each each year. We've had away games overseas and in Mexico and cross country and everywhere else. So that's what it is. Bill, how, if at all, does knowing you have two sets of joint practices coming up affect how you want to structure your practices here before you get there, your opening few practices? Uh, well, I mean, you take it into account. We, we know what we're going to do in Detroit. We know what we're going to do in Tennessee. We'll try to do the things that we need to do to prepare for what we're going to do there. Uh, so. You know, we have a little bit more control over if we were by ourselves. Uh, but there's a great benefit to working with those two great organizations. And we'll work around what, what we would do by ourselves and either work it in with them or find some other time to do it. How does um, Julian Edelman's sort of approach, whether it be at practice or just the way he comes in the building, set a tone for the rest of the team? Yeah, we have a lot of hardworking guys on our team. Julian's one of them. And we have a lot of guys that come to work. Most of, most everybody, for that matter, just comes to work with a purpose and, and a great attitude and great work ethic every day. I think we all feed off each other on that. Have you noticed him at all, like, extending himself to help others? Or maybe he always did that, but um, bring a young receiver along and sort of showing some of the finer points of the game. Like, is that something that is pretty consistent? With him. Okay, we have a lot of players that do that. I'd say really all of our veteran players do it. Yeah, I mean, he does it, but I mean, they all do it. <clears throat> yeah, that'll be a league matter. You should talk to them about. So, is there a, a distinct challenge or opportunity in, in meshing a number of new coaches and having coaches in different spots? I don't think I'm following you, Tom. You look at the turnover on the coaching staff, and it could be viewed as, oh, it's going to be difficult with a bunch of guys who haven't been in the spot. Um, but is there an opportunity as well to maybe strip it down to a different way or anything like that? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's the National Football League. There's changes on every team every year. Every team changes players. And I imagine every team in the league has had staff changes. I mean, we've had staff changes almost every year. I would say every year. I can't think of one that we didn't have one. So it's the National Football League. I don't know. That's the way it is. Is there an oversight challenge for you um, with, with different I mean, Every year you try to do the best you can to put your team together and put it in the most competitive position. Possible, and that includes everything. It's every single aspect of the organization is encompassed in that that plan and that goal. So I don't see this year as any different from any other year. I don't think any year will be any different. Fundamentally, it's different in that there are different changes and different modifications or adjustments or things you might have to do differently. But even if you have the same people, you might be doing them differently anyway for other reasons. So, you know, each year is its own entity, and that's that's the way I try to approach it. Joe Kim had a, as a new title, Director of Skill Development. How will his role change this year from last year? 
I don't think it'll change much. Build mini camp was the teaching camp. Now it's the evaluation part with training camp. Has more. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. But as, um, as you know, more data and analytics have come out, has the way you evaluate players during this time in training camp changed with just the ability you know, to even have more access to, to different tapes and, and different numbers that are out there? No, I think it's fundamentally the same. But, I mean, we're, we're going to be in the same basic practice um, format that we were in in, in minicamp for two days. And then things change on Saturday. So for these two days, it's kind of a continuation of where we were in the spring. We don't have pads on. We don't have contact. We're not going to be, evaluate, be able to evaluate the running game, interior line play, and so forth and so on. So, um, But we'll get to that, and we'll get to it against two other teams, and we have four preseason games, same as every other team in the league, um, other than the Hall of Fame teams. So that's, you know, that's what it is. How valuable is it to have guys like former players like Troy Brown and those guys around during this time of year? Yeah, Troy's done a great job for us. Um, it's good to have Dion and um, Kevin in the spring. Um, and we've got other players here from time to time. So that's, I think it's always a plus. And it's good for our, our players um, to connect with those guys. They've heard about them. They've seen them on training tapes. They've heard us refer to them in various uh, situations or examples, and so to actually see them and interact with them, I think is good for good for the players who don't know them. And it's good for us that you know do get to see them again. So you know, we always have you know a bunch of those guys around one way or another. Look forward to seeing Rodney come in uh, in a couple of weeks, and I'm sure he'll have other teammates here with him for that. So that's all. That's all good. Is there any concern about uh, Sony making progress with the, I guess he had another procedure on the knee back in the spring, that maybe that's impacting his overall growth as a player? I think Sony's working hard. I think all of, we have players that are in a lot of different stages of uh, physical, let's call it readiness, at this point in time. So we'll just take it day by day. See how it goes. I don't know. Would you describe Matthew Slater's impact just on the organization as a whole, you know, since he's been here in the OA? Uh, very good. Very good. He's a strong leader. He obviously has a great role in the kicking game, but he's you know, one of the most respected players on the team, as he should be by everyone. High quality person. He's been a great, great part of our team for you know, over a decade. Bill, do you think about repeating? Do you feel pressure to repeat the Super Bowl champions? I'm thinking about trying to have a good day today is what I'm thinking about. And then first practice tomorrow, getting off to a good start and have a good practice tomorrow. Okay. Thank you.